present For the Record. I'm Gary Canulty. This morning on For the Record, the future of severe weather forecasting. We've just wrapped up Severe Weather Awareness Week. First this morning, people are still injured and killed by tornadoes and severe weather, even though warnings are still often issued well in advance. That's where social science is beginning to come into play, to understand what people do when severe weather threatens. I spoke to Dr. Kim Clockout mclean a meteorologist and social scientist with the National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma, who studies how the public responds when the weather turns severe. What I'd like to ask you is the, the effects on, on society and how people react to warnings, because obviously if we change the way the warnings are being issued or, or how they will follow along storms, um, and right now it seems like we, we still seem to have a problem. For whatever reason, they, they, they either don't get the information or they don't take the proper people to do the right thing. That is really the cutting edge of the science that people like me, people who work in behavioral sciences, who explore how people make decisions under conditions of, of risk, you know, and uncertainty, um, something that we can all sympathize with now living through this pandemic, right? Um, there, there is just a lot of complexity to these decisions. And what we are coming to understand is to make those choices, People have to receive the information. They have to be aware that there's a threat they need to, you know, attend to. They have to confirm that it is relevant to them. They have to have something they can do about it. They, you have to feel that you, you both know what to do and you have access to the resources to do it. And then you, you know, can, can respond. Um, so we're learning that you can't just look at the behaviors people are 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 doing, the, the actions they're taking, and assume that you know all those other things. It's not necessarily that people are ignoring us um, in the weather community. It could be that there are a lot of things happening. So we're trying to um, to improve that, that whole process. What we need to do is focus on making sure that everyone can receive information. So going into severe weather season, be thinking about, do you have multiple ways to receive information? Be aware of, you know, could this be an overnight event? That's a kind of time where we know that people really struggle to even receive information. If you're asleep, you can't go through any of those steps in that process and, and do the things you need to do to ensure that you can be safe. Do you have backups in case you lose power? All of that stuff, all that, that builds awareness is really important to think about. And then um, the last piece I'll just say is, you know, be focused on, it's, it's, if you hear a warning and you need to confirm the threat, be sure that you know what you, you would do. Would you hear, hear the warning from a weather radio, from an app, you know, be ready to turn on the TV, know where you'll go to get that confirmatory source so you can do that really quickly and, um, and get your preparations in order. Do we find that, uh, that things like the, the people are depending on one type of technology more than another, like no weather radio as opposed to uh, their, their cell phones or an app uh, or, or sirens even? I think you'll be pleased to hear this as a broadcast meteorologist. With severe weather warnings, what we find is that people typically access several different information sources. They might find out one way, like through the siren, alerting them that something's near them in the environment. They might be alerted by the fact the wind is picked up and they're really attuned to the environment. What they then do, most people, even in the internet era, most people still turn on their television and look for a local broadcast meteorologist to tell them what's going on. And there, there's some evidence that younger generations are shifting more to, to apps and, and, and their phone um, as a notification method and as a confirmation method, but the the by by far most people are getting information from a couple different places, and this makes sense since um, some things are geo targeted to you, but some things like you know you as a broadcaster you're covering a big area and people are trying to make sense of those questions. Okay, what's going on? Is this going to impact me? Sometimes that takes multiple kinds of information to put it all together. And when I've gone in after severe weather events and, and interviewed people who are survivors, I've always come away impressed with just how um, just how much people are able to, to seek information from multiple sources. I think it's a really, really good thing. And so ahead of severe weather season, if you think about having a couple different sources that give you different kinds of information, just know that that, that tends to be how most people do it. Next, how new technology will help save lives when severe weather strikes.